And what I'd like to do now is start with our speakers. Our first speaker probably was not even born, or even maybe her, maybe their parents were even married by the time uh, the Vietnam War started uh, uh, 50 years ago. Okay. Uh, at any rate, uh, her name, and I got it spelled wrong in the, in the, uh, in the uh, program. Her first name is Abby, it's A-B-B-Y, there's no E in there. Uh, and I'm going to have her come up. Um, she, uh, her, both her grandfathers are Vietnam veterans. Uh, Abby has attended uh, Badger Girl State. Uh, was it last year maybe, or going well, this year? Um, it was last year. Last year. Last Badger Girl State is a Badger Boy State with the Legion of Badger Girl State. And it's actually, a, it's, a, it's an honor to be picked to go attend those from probably your high school counselor or somebody have picked you to go there because of your academic record and interest in activities in school and other things like that. Um, and uh, they basically uh, learn a lot about politics, you know, in Wisconsin and in the, and in the United States and maybe even the world because they form the, really like the 51st it. state there or something like that. Yeah, it's a really good program. So uh, she had something uh, and she was a Miss Augusta, I think. And she's a senior, 2016 valedictorian uh, for her senior class. So if you can welcome her to here today, she has just a little short speech she's going to give us. Uh, and you can explain to me what that's about, because I don't know if I know all the details. So why don't you come up to the front here. Then. we are living here in Wisconsin. We don't have to live in fear of bombs and landmines, but there have been men and women who have left their safe environment to serve in the United States military. Two of those men were my Grandpa Tom and Grandpa Jim, who were both veterans of the Vietnam War. My grandpas both attended a high school in Augusta back in the mid-1960s with a man named Dale Erdman. Dale of Augusta, who is commemorated in the Freedom Shrine at the Augusta High School, is one of the brave men who gave the ultimate sacrifice during the Vietnam War. I hope by sharing Dale's story, he will not be forgotten for the life he gave in defense of others. Dale grew up on a farm just outside of Augusta with his parents, grandparents, and older sister. While attending high school in Augusta, Dale enjoyed playing football, hunting, fishing, and helping out on the family farm. Classmates described him as being very polite and one of the nicest boys in their grade. Dale graduated with my grandpa Tom in 1966, and later that fall, he went to Eau Claire's Technical College for sheet metal fabrication. After graduation, Dale got a job at Lampert's in Augusta. Dale was drafted into the U.S. Army in February of 1969 and after basic training was sent to Vietnam in July. He served with the 25th Infantry Division in South Vietnam. On April 7, 1970, Dale and his unit were air inserted by helicopters in Tay Minh City. The area was surrounded by forests, forest and bomb craters. Once the enemy was spotted, the men were told to charge the woods. Unfortunately, there were highly trained snipers hiding in the trees who began shooting at the American soldiers. A medevac helicopter came to rescue the wounded and dying men, but crashed when the pilot was shot. Another helicopter was sent to help, but it was too late to help Dale. At the young age of 22, Dale died in the arms of a fellow soldier, along with many other men who made the ultimate sacrifice. Throughout Dale's service, he was awarded over 11 medals, including the Bronze Star, Purple Heart, Air Medal, Vietnam Service Medal, Vietnam Civil Actions Unit Citation, and the Good Conduct Medal. Dale was planning on returning home later that summer for his sister's wedding, and after his service, he planned on running the family farm. My grandpa Tom described Vietnam as being very different than what we're used to here in America. While serving in Vietnam, men witnessed and lived through horrible things. Sometimes men couldn't determine who their enemy was, were ambushed, and even watched some of their close friends die. Battles could last for hours or even days, meaning there would constantly be noise due to the bombing and gunfire. Sometimes we take freedom for granted, but freedom is not free. 
Many brave men and women gave the ultimate sacrifice in the Vietnam War. Even in our area, we have heroes that shouldn't be forgotten. I hope that you leave this assembly today remembering Dale Erdman and the sacrifice that so many heroic men and women give in defense of our freedom and way of life. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Eddie Randall. Uh, we did have a 50th anniversary pin for you, Vietnam veteran, the Vietnam War 50th anniversary pin, and our 2016 uh, Vietnam Veterans Day pin too, so thank you. you're welcome. And thank you for coming out from Augusta today. And thank you, Joe uh, Graf, for pointing them out that we had uh, a great young speaker to come in here and talk to us. So thank you very much again. I'm always amazed, you know, I do, we do a lot of stuff with the VFW with Voice of Democracy and Patriots Pen, the Legion has the oratorical contest, and it always is amazing, because I know, I, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I sent some letters home from Vietnam and my mother kept them, that was a big mistake, because I couldn't write worth anything, it, it was bad, the spelling was bad, everything was pretty bad there, so when I see these young people come up and prepare written stuff like this, or do things by memory, or in the case of the Legion Oratorical Contest, have basically the, the Constitution, everything else memorized and know what everything pretty much means in it. It just impresses the daylights out of me because I just remember how stupid I was back in the 50 some years ago. Hey, so now you know that my problem. So we'll, we'll talk about other people's here in a minute. Next one up is our Gold Star Mother. She is the state president, I believe, yet, and the president of the local chapter, call those, Kay Olson also on our planning committee, but she was in Hawaii for a while, so she wasn't there the whole time. No, only a couple times. Okay, <laughs> um, good afternoon. I have a question to ask you. Who knows what a gold star mother is? How many of you? Ooh, I am pleased to see that, because when I speak, very few people know what a gold star mother is, and they think it's an awesome organization to belong to, which we know it's not. When I became a Gold Star Mother, it starts with a, and I'm sorry to tell you, Mrs. Olson, your son, Marine Sergeant Andy Stevens, was killed in Iraq, Fallujah, Iraq, on December 1st, 2005. You'll never forget that moment. And then time passes. And then you find out about this awesome organization, the American Gold Star Mothers. American Gold Star Mothers organization, whose sons or daughters served and died while in their country of war and conflict. The name American Gold Star Mothers derives from the custom of military families who served, <clears throat> had a blue flag serving, uh, with the flag with the blue star was hanging in their window. From there, it was transferred into becoming a member of the American Gold Star Mothers. These were all branches of service. Now we're called the U.S. Armed Forces. When a Gold Star symbol for a family uh, dies then in the line of duty, then that Blue Star is then transferred into a Gold Star. In 1918, the American Gold Star Mothers group was founded by a mother by the name of Grace Darling Seinbold of Wisconsin or of Washington, D.C. Her son was killed in aerial combat over France in August of 1918. Mrs. Seinbold had already been volunteering in uh, different veterans' hospitals. After she learned of her son's death, she continued to work and become organizing groups of women to work in these veterans' homes or with veterans' families. The mothers did volunteer work together and also served as a support group for themselves. Today, membership is for a mother whose child has died or died of wounds in the line of duty of the armed forces. The associate members, husbands, brothers, sisters, and mothers, and er, sisters and grandfathers and mothers, are then can become our associate members. They do not pay for their dues, only the Gold Star Mothers do. The American Gold Star Mothers is a mother, also belongs on the board of the American Veterans uh, VA Hospitals. We are on the uh, volunteer services. 
The American Gold Star Mother serves many, many, many hours with all our veterans' hospital and all veterans' uh, homes in the United States. On September 14, 1940, the late President Franklin Roosevelt issued a proclamation designating the last Sunday in September as the American Gold Star Mother Day. The American Gold Star Mothers conducted service at the Arlington Cemetery, placing a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. Throughout the United States, other chapters hold similar uh, ceremonies at uh, the cemeteries or they worship together at a church service, whatever is appropriate in their ch uh, chapter or their community. When I became aware of the American Gold Star Mothers, I met Elaine Flatten and Dolores Debney. They were two of the most outstanding ladies in our area, in the Eau Claire or Chippewa Valley area. As I understand, the American Gold Star Mothers was a large organization during World War I, World War II, Korean War, and the Vietnam War. Wearing white is a symbol. It is our statement that will take you beyond the morning and it shows peace, sacrifice, innocence, goodness, and representing our children. Those are the things that our children died for. One thing, when the American Gold Star Mothers are wearing white, it is very distinctive and we stand out either at praise, at services, um, honoring veterans in the different homes, so our white is a dignity dignity and reverence to their sons and their daughters. When I was in the military, I served for 26 years, I had to become a casualty assistance officer. Now I thought that was the hardest job. I had to go tell this family that their son, 25 years old, had died of a severe heart attack on a treadmill in Bosnia. I spent six weeks with that family from the time I told them until he was buried and the cemetery was completely done and all the paperwork was. You really get to know a family and I thought that was really hard. That wasn't the hardest thing I had to do. <laughs> um, I'm an American Gold Star mother. I'm retired in the Army with 26 years of active duty service. I'm also a wife and a mother. I'm the president of the Wisconsin American Gold Star Mothers, uh, Eau Claire. And I'm also the Wisconsin State President for the American Gold Star Mothers. I belong to military organizations like the Toma VADS, American Legion, American Legion Auxiliary, TRIA, TRIA Auxiliary, WINGA, WINGA Auxiliary, Patriotic Council for Eau Claire, Purple Heart Auxiliary, the Eau Claire County Veterans, United Veterans Council, the Wisconsin Veterans Home at Chippewa Falls, I'm on the Recreation Committee, and I'm serving with the Veterans Committee for Vietnam here, and I'm proud to do it all. My son was 29 years old. He was killed um, in Iraq with um, 10 other men, and 11 were injured that day. Between Andy, myself, and Andy's, my husband, Andy's stepdad, we have 74 years of military career. I want to say thank you to all of the veterans today, and I honor all those who served honorably in the United States military during both wartime and peace. May the good Lord bless you, grant you peace, health, and grace. And thank you. Thank you very much, Kay, and thank you for your sacrifices. Uh, our next speaker uh, uh, is, uh, let's see, where am I? Uh, from the Hmong Lao veterans, our former captain, Nao Sao Zong, if you could come up please and say a few words. Um, he is the Wisconsin Lao Veterans of the Association president right now, I believe, right now? Thank you. Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to say thank you for and that is the world and my friends Libra. Uh, it's a little hard for me to uh, call your names too. Uh, to invite me and my community or my 
uh, organization to uh, enjoy these ceremonies today. Yeah, let me uh, introduce a li little bit to myself. So I am the Viscante Lao veteran of American Aid Corporation. Yeah, right now, so I respond for all the Hmong and Laos uh, uh, veterans. This uh, organization uh, built from our leader, uh, General Wang Pao, and his uh, leader uh, stopped uh, the California in 1991 until today. Uh, this turn is it's my turn. I feel we appreciate the bring to my veterans, the Hmong Lao veterans uh, who have the folk with <coughs> side by side with the American CIA, the special force in secret wars in Laos during the Vietnam War. And to try this event, it is very important for all veterans uh, to know each other what we did uh, in the <coughs> Vietnam War. Uh, today, uh, today is a very special day. So I want, to, I want my friends and my sister, my, uh, my friends and sister, to understand why when the Hmong Laos people are uh, here in the United States of America, because uh, during the Vietnam War, the communists spread around the world, and it, during 1960. And the American CIA former colonel or GS assistant, and James William, we call Bell Lab. They came to uh, meet General Wang Pao, so they both uh, had issues together, and they shake hands together and promise together, and they built or recruit the Hmong people and Lao people become a soldier to help black the Ho Chi Minh jail and rescue the American pilots who shut down the border from Hanoi. And the and others and they are they are they control the radar the United States radar system in the pool party. We call Sa'id And also, they protest our homelands to form democracy. After 15 years, they started in 1961 to 1975, after the communists took over the Laos country and also the South Vietnam and Cambodia. It was May 14th. 1975, General Wang Pao uh, acted uh, free to Thailand and all the our veterans uh, acted all during that time. It's a very hard time for our people because the United States or through the they pull out of the country back home, so let us uh, in the jungle, and the after communists take over, it. Uh, Catch the our king Sisawa Vaktana and also with all the Hmong and Laos soldiers who uh, fought to fight side by side with the United States armies, they call re-education, but finally they put in jail. Until today, so we, didn't, we didn't know information about them. And after that, so General Van Kao so came to the you know, French. And he here in the United States in 1975, and also in the, all the Hmong Laos people uh, who fight with the United States uh, during the Vietnam War or support the Vietnam War, they were came to this country, and that is very hard for us to uh, come to stand alive in the, this country before. Because the way we came to this country, we didn't know how to speak English, and everything's new for us. I believe that the people they don't know how to use the bathroom, and 
they don't know how to speak English and because they are also the, our people they live in the highland mountain before that. And that is so hard to start a new life for us when we came to this country. And all the things that I remember since 1993 is so all, all the people so don't understand why the Hmong people are here. And since I remember one time I advised in General Vanpao come to our community and to talk about uh, why we are here, talk to major and county and also in the state of Wisconsin. During that time, the governor coming time uh, in there. And during that time, so all the former president, Pam B. Avance, he's also there too. And met that people understand why for the Hmong in Laos and all people in here. So until today, we have our appreciation and to try this um, to try the Vietnam veteran and also other other group like a uh, American Legion and other groups. Uh, sorry, I didn't know that at all, but I just know a Vietnam veteran and American Legion, and might be they will tell me in the future. <laughs> and yeah, this this time uh, I will. We are proud of so all the Hmong and Laos people uh, to this country and thank uh, our children. And we have time to set a new life. And now so we got a high education. Uh, since I know so now they have, they have the uh, 60, almost uh, 60 hundreds uh, doctor, lawyer. And that is a uh, real appreciate for all of the veterans and who come to yeah, the Southeast Asian to start the company to spread out of our country. And thank you for the United States government and can uh, bring all of us into this country and they provide the food and also social service and everything for us. And we we are appreciate. And also we went to Washington DC and to ask the government in there so they give the American citizen yeah, for all veterans yeah, many years ago. That's uh, very good for us too. And <coughs> finally, so I thank you for all of my friends and my sister and my brother and we fight together. And now he has to stay, sit out here and face here. But including my father and also your brother and my sister and who fight the front line. So, they not in here, but that is okay because we win the war. That's okay. And I would like to invite to all in the veteran to enjoy some our ceremony on May 14. And May 14, uh, we will start at nine o'clock to twelve in, at the Kadak. You know, conduct to the American Legion that uh, we this year uh, they allowed to us uh, um, build the General Wang Pao and American CIA Jin, uh, GX system, uh, Jin Bellet. Bellet. There's a monument here there. So I would like to invite everybody to please come to join us in the, during that day. It may, remember May 14. At 9 o'clock to, to noon in the Kadab, and 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock in the High Gao, Vietnam Memory Park today. I think everybody should know it there. And the ceremonies, I will invite the yeah, keynote speaker, like a General Wang Pao San, and also a couple of colonel. And I believe that just, uh, last year, uh, like a Dennis, uh, in there too and also many friends in there to support us in this year. I'm pretty grateful for all of you come to support us too. Yeah, today is a very nice day, but a little snow, that's okay for us, right? And like <laughs> we fight each other, we fight for the companies and we went into here today, that's a pretty, pretty good for me. And all of the United States governments help us. To, okay. That's all I have. Uh, thank you for arriving. Uh, you see, thank you. everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.